The goal of this gingerbread house project was to really show off what Mastercam and Hermley can do when paired together on a really complicated part. So in this case, what we're trying to do is really try to optimize every toolpath so that we get the best surface finish out of every single toolpath. The snow that goes around the bottom of the house was the challenge because this was a very organic surface, but it was also a mesh. So being a mesh, it's composed of a lot of triangles that have normals that face all over the place. And when you run a toolpath normal to those faces, the tool axis control jitters a lot because each triangle has its own orientation. So if we zoomed in and took a look at this, uh, the bottom of this mesh, you can see what I'm talking about. If I turn on the mesh facet edges, each of these triangles has its own orientation. And this toolpath is using this orientation of these triangles to decide the orientation of the tool. So if we snap to this view, uh, we can kind of talk about one feature in Mastercam that is really new and really, really powerful. So we started with this morph toolpath. Basically right out of the box, just created a morph between two curves and we analyzed the toolpath. You can see the tool's angle remains pretty consistent. The problem with this is when we posted out this code, we can see the number of reversals the B axis and the C axis have here. So 1800 reversals the B, 651 reversals of the C. So a reversal is something we really want to try to, to back away from. Mastercam has this cool new utility called smoothing under tool axis control. So when we turn on the smoothing button, that actually opens up a drop down. We've done videos on smoothing before and shown how powerful it really is when it comes to eliminating reversals and smoothing tool axis control, but we've never really gone into the specifics of what's happening on this page. What we're looking at here is the default value of smoothing when you turn on the smoothing checkbox. And for the most part, what we've done is just turn on smoothing and let it go. So when we do this, you can see, first of all, we go from 1800 B axis reversals to 54. And then again, we cut the C axis down by about 20%. So the problem with this is if you zoom in, you can see this code doesn't look very uniform. It has been smoothed, but what's happening is there is a global smoothing factor in play here. So when this says a global, what it's doing is it's taking the entire toolpath into account when it tries to smooth all the motion. So looking at this on analyze, if you mainly focus on the Z direction here, pretty constant. It does have a little bit of a jitter to it. If these blue lines showed us the contact point of the tool, it would remain perfectly constant because in theory, we are maintaining a constant contact point. But there's a slight variation in tilt in between each one of these passes that creates some inefficiencies, some problems that we really want to get away from. So running with full default smoothing in this case actually caused us some problems at the machine. There is the opportunity to tune that smoothing a little bit. Now, I have two toolpaths here that have some tuning in play. So basically taking the global smoothing factor and limiting it. So if we look at this drop down, we went from max tilt angle of 90 degrees down to 10. And I believe this strength percent defaults to around 30. We cut this down to five. So this really is basically the same algorithm, just kind of turned down a little bit compared to our first toolpath here. And you can see the reversals have increased and it does seem to be a little bit smoother when it comes to the variations from pass to pass. You do see there's some what appear to be step over variations. This is not a step over variation, it's a tool tilt orientation variation. So global smoothing in this case is taking into account the tilt on the top of this part as it works this way down. And this is kind of throwing things off as we get down towards the bottom of the part. We also have the ability to smooth a specific axis. So when we open tool axis smoothing, we can say smooth the rotary axis around Z. So basically we're targeting our C axis to smooth a little bit. And I'm telling it basically don't even try to smooth anything on the tilt axis and just give us 10 degrees either way on the rotary. And again, I turn down the strength a bit. And in this case, you can see the reversals do jump up a bit. They're still really reduced from the beginning tool path, but in this case, we don't see any variations in the step over. This step over looks really nice. It's really consistent. There's no variations in height along this drop here. Everything seems to run really smoothly. This is the best of these two smoothed options. And again, on a machine with a really high end control like a Heidenhain would have, the Heidenhain takes this code with 1800 reversals and does a really good job of smoothing over it. But in this case, Mastercam is helping by almost cutting those in half 
and still giving us a really good toolpath. So the smoothing page is a really powerful thing to use and it's important not to just turn it on and let the default values go. It's really something you can tune and get something really effective out of.